It don't matter what I try I just can't win and I don't know why There's a fork in every road I pick the wrong one and then I go American loser, yes I am Disenfranchised from everything well, I fall up and I fall down An American loser the day I was born Live from a shared universe podcast studio in Eatontown, New Jersey During some sort of a, a natural phenomenon of storms uh, it's American Loser Podcast, guys. It's the podcast that puts the spotlight firmly on second place. With us, as always, my Dilf of a dad, Larry. How are you? Oh, we're just doing great, Kev. Here we are in Eatontown, New Jersey. With this beautiful weather outside, aren't you so glad you've traded in uh, You know the beautiful South Florida weather for the gorgeous north end of the Jersey Shore? Yeah, and to go out in, in waders on, on a rainy day in North Jersey. It's the truth, so... Uh, behind the ones and twos is, as always, who else? The hardest working man in show business. <laughs> All right. And he got the AC fixed for us. Guys, who other than the big kahuna? How are you, buddy? I'm good, man. How you doing? How you doing? I'm not as good as you, pal. You got TV credits this week. <laughs> All right. So if anybody who's yeah. paying attention saw some current events going on, old kahuna's making a name for himself. Pretty soon we're going to be producing his podcast. Yeah. That's how that's going to work. Kahuna's Casting Couch, the, the sole spinoff, coming Dude, soon. this is going to be the best casting couch uh, ever, I think, when, once you get a load of this guy. And you're going to have many, many possibilities yeah. with this guy. So, uh, for those who don't know, if this is your first episode listening, welcome to the show. If you're a regular listener, welcome back. Uh, I do have to say one thing real quickly. Our Patreon, i got to thank the diehard, the founding losers of the show, okay? Because the founding losers contributed enough money in our first 24 hours after launching the Patreon that we legitimately covered our monthly nut for uh, yeah, studio time and expenses and shit. So, well, not all expenses, but at least studio. <laughs> we, studio time is now covered. Mike and Ming can no longer ask us to leave uh, <laughs> because we are, we are covering. They do take great care of us, but we got them figured out on this. Um, and we're very excited, too, because uh, that just means that as we continue to go, that means a potential marketing budget, which means we can do more content for you guys. So if you want, for just five bucks, that's all we're asking, sign up on our Patreon. Uh, I have, uh, I'll have i have the link up on my Facebook. The link is up on the American Loser Podcast Instagram page. Uh, a American Loser Facebook page is in the works, and also YouTube is going to be coming out with some of our video content in the near future. So please get on board with us now. Five bucks. You choose to donate more. Thank you. But, uh, you know, I appreciate that. But for five bucks, uh, it guarantees that uh, we can continue to make a profit of $2.20 a month. Tell them what they win, though, Kip, with their five dollars. Yeah, a five dollar donation guarantees you. Thank you. Good call, LP. You see why he's here? You see why he's really? here? about to introduce our guest in a second here. But uh, I do have to say that that five dollars, that's not us just taking from you, okay? That gives you our exclusive bonus episode every month. We're going to call it a premium episode, actually, uh, because it's Patreon exclusive. We're not going to put those out uh, later on for everybody for free. We're going to put those out just for those listeners. And that means that those topics, we can go a little bit more in depth, and we can play a little bit more to the home crowd. Because you know what? Uh, some of these episodes, I have to try to get people who are in it, who are like, I know about that guy, but I never heard of him. Maybe I'll give this podcast a shot. But the diehards, we can already tackle some stuff, because you guys are typically very smart. All right? We have some smart fans out there. <laughs> yeah, are we included as a site? As a citation on Wikipedia for yes. something now? It, yes, If absolutely. someone was to write a college paper on Tammany Hall, the political machine that effectively ran New York for most of New York's years. existence, yeah. <laughs> uh, you would be able to correctly use as a citation the American Loser podcast, <laughs> and your professor couldn't say shit. Um, now thank, speak, you, thank you to John Greco for that. Yeah, which I, I hope he heard that. We did shout-outs for all the... I got uh, one last housekeeping business. All right, you know exactly what yep, I'm saying. Absolutely. I'll take, uh, one of my oldest friends, a great guy, a guy I've uh, I worked with at a summer camp for endless summers, a guy who supported the show from almost its inception, and one of our legit founding losers. I left him off the list, Kahuna. Yep. What? Yep. Yeah, really. The, le the legendary Matt Dalzell was left off the founding losers list. Matt, um, I am personally, I apologize. Yes. I had nothing to do with it, but it I'm is, sorry uh, for you. It's really, it is Kahuna's fault. It's um, a hang in it's a face. <laughs> <laughs> But it's bad, man. Uh, I felt terrible. Matt's a great guy. He's been supporting the show since day one. He shares the show. He does a lot of nice things for us. That being said, let's introduce our guest. we got a killer guest here. One, Actually, a, a guy whose comedy I really enjoy, but one of the most fun people to talk to I've ever met. We clicked immediately upon meeting. 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the pride of Slotesburg, New York, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Eric Albert. How are you, buddy? Thank What's you for coming. What's happening, KP? Thanks for having me on. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know why we clicked as well as we did the first time we met doing stand-up. Uh, it might have been the booze, or it might have been our, you know, ability to make poor decisions. It was uh, a... <laughs> it's right. a mixture of both. Yeah, it's that weird thing where nihilists join together because... <laughs> <laughs> Animal magnetism? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, no, it, it was, uh, if you like, um, like, you know, terrible, dark jokes and drinking beer, then Eric Albert's your man. So, it was Aww. very quick, but... Uh, buddy, we think we, ha we have a list at the house of losers that we're going to cover. Okay. And you usurped all of them by simply name-dropping this one guy. Well, yeah, I was like, have you ever heard of the gentleman we're going to be speaking of? And you were like... It's great. It's familiar, but I don't know much. And I go, oh, well, let's open this can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> one of the greatest wormholes I have ever fallen down, uh, thanks to my pal Eric, who we had to bring you in for this one. It, was, it would be an injustice right, to not absolutely. have you in for it. Love this guy. Um, this guy's great. Kona, you had a genius idea about ranking these people on a scale mm -hmm. okay so as we've covered with the show sometimes an american loser is somebody who is lost in the records of history sometimes a loser is a total jackass yeah sometimes a loser is somebody batshit crazy <laughs> and this guy is all of those we're <laughs> no. taking all the check marks on prepare this. for a charles j gato dan sickles level of loserdom uh i'm ecstatic here no New, way. Newfound respect for the city of San Francisco yes. based off of this guy. I love that um, you didn't call it Frisco. We would have had to fine you $35. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. This guy is a legend in uh, San Francisco, and people don't know too, too much about him, but his legacy still prevails to this day. That's what we really like is people that have been dead for you know uh, decades, sometimes centuries, who are still uh, coming up in conversations today. We got every base covered. Ladies and gentlemen, Emperor Norton. Emperor Norton Emperor. the first. Norton one. Norton Emperor. One. Yep. So, uh, well, not only the emperor, but he was also the protector of Mexico. Oh, it, it, the guy's got titles. Yes. All right. So, um, it's. And his own money. He gets about as good as I've ever seen, man. And uh, set me up here. All okay. right. We're going we're gonna, to, I think we're going to dive down this one. Kahuna, who do we consider royalty in America? Uh, the Kennedys. Kennedys would be one of the families, right? Presidential families. Uh, so, well, Bushes, Clintons are, are up there, right? And then, yeah. then high-ranking celebrities. Correct. But, but that's really it. Certain ones. Like, in some point in a despotic regime change, we are going to all be working for, uh, you know, Kanye West and Kim Kardashian's mm. children. So it's just going to happen. There's no way around it. Um, <laughs> but we have no royal family here in America. There are certainly elite families in our nation that uh, never, never had a real, like, autocrat type of power, right? Mm-hmm. So our nation's built on checks and balances, in theory. Um, and we all bitch about government gridlock, which oddly means that it's working. So there's that confusion, too. <laughs> so I understand the appeal of an emperor, because an emperor can come in there, roll his sleeves up, and get some shit done. Right, Dad? The most efficient form of government is a dictatorship, so an emperor is not too far off from that. So Right. And he's, you only got to ask one guy. He makes all the decisions. So emperor works. Uh, so there's the appeal for an emperor, but then there's also whatever, uh, as, as we learned, um, we were warned in my Navy days about women who uh, live in Navy towns. If they do it for you, they can do it to you, is the, <laughs> the term we were told. Okay, so uh, that was a warning for, you know, always be wary of a girl who knows how much money you make before you announce your rank. Right. Knows um, your pay grade and your... <laughs> yeah. So an emperor can uh, come in there, make a lot of good change if they're a benevolent guy, like, say, a Marcus Aurelius. But uh, by that same coin, Eric, is there a particular Roman emperor that maybe went well, a little too far? Thinking Caligula. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not my favorite one, perchance. No, but there, there's a long list of I have good... been compared to him. <laughs> he did like the party, though. I mean, there is that. Exactly. It was... Uh, um, and if you've ever been to a party at Eric's house, you would know why he's called Caligula. So, <laughs> my sister wasn't there. It's ah, uh, 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 dark, dark, dark. Um, so we're going to establish that idea. Kahuna's face is priceless right now, by the way. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, it seems off topic, right? But if you're already com contemplating the idea of this American emperor, that's kind of wild. Is it a good or a bad thing? Are we going to get like a, a Russia's Peter the Great? Are we going to get a, a Emperor Nero? We don't know what we're getting our hands on here. So 
Would he be a descendant of a, a wealthy, prominent American family? Or perhaps a failed businessman from England living in San Francisco? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Joshua Abraham Norton, Emperor of the United States. Did you, did Joshua you know? Joshua Abraham Norton. No, I've never heard of this guy. Did you English, know we had an emperor? No. English Jew who left England, moved to South Africa. Don't get too far ahead, Eric. We got to tell a story, you bastard. Came to America. <laughs> I just little little backstory. <laughs> it's uh, this one's interesting too. Here, have you been to San Francisco? Yes, I did once. I was on tour with my my dad. I just there. went to see the house from Full House. That's it. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> but nah, it was a, it was a cool place. I actually really liked it. My dad took me on the route where they shot Bullet. Like the no shit, I was oh, just, yeah, yeah. The, the, the hills and stuff it. like it's that. It's a good town, yeah. a good town. And we also have to, have to plug something, uh, a project of Eric's towards the end here. But I do want to start breaking down old Norton. Um, Lawrence Patrick, you were out in San Fran for a little bit, was, right? right? And you didn't know shit about this guy. No, never came upon him. You know, did the whole Touristio, uh, uh Fisherman's Wharf and uh, Alcatraz and all that kind of thing, but never came upon uh, Emperor Norton. Then you did not truly no, enjoy not. the San Francisco it's experience. Definitely worth a, a <laughs> second trip, at least. We've covered how wild San Fran is as a town, too, by the way. Oh, wait uh, a minute. Find him. No, please. no, San Fran is allowed. San Fran is allowed. Frisco. Okay. Oh, all right. Okay. This is an my abomination bad. My that bad. will not so, be uttered. Okay. If anyone says uh, the, the dreaded term Frisco on the show while discussing San Francisco, we will put a jar in the middle of the table and an Emperor Norton tax will be collected. <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> $35. <laughs> he was very specific on that. Now, uh, again, we've covered how wild there are a lot of colorful personalities out in old San Francisco. Uh, you got uh, the Beatniks, the Hippies of Haight Ashbury, Jerry Garcia, Steve Young, Maya Angelou, Inspector Harry Callahan. The Zodiac Killer and lose reception time, folks. Jack London. Yep. So, don't forget so this, this episode's got everything, basically. You know it. And don't forget, that's where Robin Williams was doing stand-up. True. Him and Kevin Pollack were the, uh, the first couple of winners of the San Francisco International Comedy Competition. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wild stuff, dude. Crazy um, city. They, they got a lot going on, but no personality, I would agree with Eric on this, seems to encapsulate San Francisco's bizarre but... Fun fondness for the eccentric, quite like our boy Norton One, Emperor of America. He's part Times Square's naked cowboy, part vermin supreme. <laughs> That's what oh. I was going. I was waiting for you to bring that up. Part elegant hobo, part crazy, part brilliant, and all around quality <laughs> loser father. <Yeah. laughs> yep. Oh, so he's a visionary. Kahuna brought up his photo immediately. <laughs> and, there uh, it is. Yeah, oh, it, it's pretty great. Um, he looks like he was in a civil war. Yep, but he wasn't. His his uh, dress, as we will cover later in the episode, his, is also his hilarious. dress. He uh, well, not well, not a dress not, dress, but his attire, I should okay. say. Okay, yeah, um, the emperor's clothes, <laughs> <laughs> which he has, which he has, true. right? He, which he is wearing. Not <laughs> not a true naked emperor here on this one, no. but uh, imagine the pride. All right, because my parents are uh, the, the beautiful Larry and Sandy Burke, um, and imagine their pride in knowing that their son would one day make two dollars and twenty cents an episode on his podcast um, it's, and it's not an episode it's actually a month but whatever um but knowing uh that your son right these nice people named sarah and john norton over in england as eric said imagine the pride swelling and filling their hearts knowing that their son would one day be the emperor of america and protector of mexico <laughs> <laughs> i like that too. is there any other labels i should know about for this guy the sultan of swat like what is he's got a game of thrones vibe <laughs> to him right <laughs> You know, of, well, uh, there is something that he did do later on in his life that you could credit to him, but I think we're going to get there eventually. Yeah, let's um, also a unfold it a little bit. Yeah, we got to unpack the crazy because yeah, he's <laughs> unbox this. I one. love the comparison to Vernon Supreme, by the way. Oh, that's it. It's parallel, actually. No, like, once we start getting there, you're going to go. Oh my, go. Oh. Okay. Yeah, all right. I'm kind of getting on the Vermin Supreme bandwagon. I got to listen to him a little bit more. He might have some good ideas. Okay. It's uh, it's that weird thing of every now and then a guy who wears a boot as a hat says something intelligent. So it's the the broken clock theory, right, Dad? Mm -hmm. But um, tells the right time twice. Yeah. Th there's a little. Um, th there's some interesting stuff here. So we're gonna slowly unpack him for the uh, so we don't overwhelm the audience. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. Um, we're, we're, ju we're jumping ahead a few years here. Let's, uh, yeah. again, born in England. Starts in England, right? 
So uh, they are, as Eric said, uh, two English Jewish merchant families. Um, and uh, his parents were both from well off families who made their money as merchants. His mother's, uh, get this one by the way, so his name's Norton, right? So that means his father's name is Norton, right? Mm -hmm. So guess what his mother's maiden name is? Norden. Really? With a D. So imagine that. It, now here's the good part it maintains any rhyme schemes that they had, right, for anything that they were doing. And then also you don't have to change your monogram towels. So <laughs> that's right. I still got the end. <laughs> Very miserly. Ooh, ooh, Eric. Well, no, that was one of his traits, as you can see later on in his life. As well, he had to be because man, did this guy get screwed over. Um, <laughs> so, uh, was it his own doing? We'll find out. That's that's actually curious it's because debatable. when you read it, you have a sense of um, wherever your heart takes you on it. So we now have a chance to ask Kahuna here, who plays the role of both our producer and our audience. We now get to bounce that off of you. What do you want to know? We'll, we'll get there. No, as God. we see, shoot from the hip like you always do, which we love you for. But tell me where you start to feel either sympathy or uh, apathy towards the guy. Okay. So, um, their son Joshua was born to them in a part of Britain that's now considered London city limits. Right? I don't like him already. <laughs> <laughs> no limeys on this show. Actually, we gotta be careful. It'll be a roller coaster ride. We, Let's we, just put it that way. We've got some international listeners now. Australia, Ireland, and the UK's numbers are all up. So Fantastic. thank you very much to our listeners over there. Thank you. We appreciate and our listeners you. in the Russian you. Federation. Please know that um, we are carrying out our orders as given to us by Emperor Putin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just contact me. I'll give you That's all right. of my contact information and my IP address. We did one episode on the Rosenbergs. All of a sudden, I got my inbox full of, hey, by the way, can you let us know what's going on at Fort Monmouth? Um, but like <laughs> all right. good losers, and I think this seems to be a trait. We don't intend this, but all losers seem to have... Uh, a birth date that's subject of debate. You know what I mean? So many claim he was born in 1818, which would make him around two years old when his parents moved and relocated to South Africa as part of a government-funded plan for colonization. So his family works as merchants in the Cape Colony, all right, as it was known back then, and enjoyed a relatively comfortable life with uh, probably ample means. Is that fair to say, Eric? Yeah. Um, you know, with the debate about his years on his birthday that's fine we always know the day so if you want to celebrate the man it's there there's no debate on what day of the week it was but yeah i mean you know he went down to south africa his family started up and you know they were getting some money in there laying the groundwork trying to maybe Building. make a nice life for their son who knew what he'd become <laughs> building the, building the, uh, the enterprise Eric always throws me off because he's an eloquent drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sober, damn it. That's a, also, for now. Um. <laughs> Give it five minutes. I haven't, dr I haven't drank in a month. <laughs> it is what it is with the times, man. But uh, much of Norton's younger years are kind of, there's not really a whole lot of info for him here. Like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, true. It's uh, I, I keep telling my dad. He's I was like, "You too." That's, <laughs> if you, you're killing us. This, oh, the shit. conspiracy theories within the conspiracy theories are going to get fun here. Um, it's easy to assume, though, that uh, at some point, you know, Norton winds up learning the ins and outs of his father's business. Now, when I mention Norton and a business dad, what does your instinct tell you? My influence? Well, Your I, instincts. I, instincts. Instincts would say that he is learning from his, you know, at his father's knee, that he's going to be a successful businessman as well. I mean, he's he's raised within it both families, so his mother, mother's family and his father's family were both. You, you know what hurts me? You set this bastard up for a Honeymooners reference, and he misses it. Oh, jeez. Norton, working the family business. Oh, well, see, I didn't, I didn't put it to the immediate... Uh, uh, to the post moon. TV, yeah, right to the moon, <laughs> Alice to the moon. Yeah, Norton, uh, that Norton, certainly not the emperor, but uh, that Norton it does have a very strong honeymoon reference. When you first mentioned Norton, that's that was my response. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the honeymoon Norton. or Norton? Hey, Norton. Norton. This uh, Norton also had a uh, a flair for the haberdashery. Oh, what a word! That's a underused word. Um, LP, if you're ready for your time to shine, we're about to set you up for it. We're, we're playing well, T-ball on this one. You, you still got to get the guy there. We're about to get there. All right. So, uh, as we said, his younger years not really well reported on, but it, in theory, if he worked import-export stuff, merchant life like his father, which would lend itself to the theory that, according to the legend, and again, this some of it's substantiated, some of it's legend, that Norton would arrive in a town called San Francisco 
on a ship named the Francesca, all right, in San Francisco in 1849. Lawrence Patrick Burke, why would San Francisco be a hot place to be in 1849? Well, he didn't arrive in 1849. He arrived there a couple of uh, a little couple of years after, but in 1849, there's a huge event that occurs. I have occurs it at 49, just saying. That has a, a huge event occurring in, in California that uh, there's... As a um, Raider fan, I'm just scratching the back of my head. <laughs> <laughs> the 49ers? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, 1849, you might have heard the term the 49ers. Well, that goes back to this date in history, 1849 that there's actually in 1848, but late in 1848, and it really wasn't become publicized until 1849, there's a precious um, commodity discovered in California. Cajones, you got any idea? You're looking at me a little bit cross-eyed It's a there. certain color. Certain color, certain... Uh, malleable It's texture. quite valuable. Malleable texture. Uh, is, it, it, is it gold, it, per se? It would be gold. It would be gold. That... Uh, and the country is overwhelmed with like gold fever, as it came to be known as. That uh, yeah, there's gold discovers in Nimnar Hills at a little place, <laughs> a little place called uh, Sutter's Mill. Now there's a guy, John Sutter, who's a German-born Swiss citizen. Um, he starts this little colony, really, in Nueva Helvetia, Veta, uh, New Switzerland. Um, He's got this whole concept of this, like, almost a utopian kind of society of, of farming. and They always do. He's, he's potentially another topic, uh, another loser down the road, because uh, when you hit, hear about uh, Mr. John Sutter's backstory and his... Mid-1800s hippie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> setting up this, uh, this own, his own town, if you will, um, which later becomes known as the city of Sacramento. So for the listeners to kind of give you an idea of where this all took place. And who plays in Sacramento? The Kings. Wait a minute. And we're talking about the Emperor. <laughs> there you go. Another Was it a derivation? Why is California into royalty like this? Hmm. But um, this guy Sutter is, is setting up this whole society that he's going to be ruling of and it requires um for them to actually build this sawmill so he hires a guy by the name of james wilson marshall now marshall is an interesting character was in, in his own right that um he is hired by sutter to build this sawmill because you're going to need lumber in order to build this town and it's, uh, you know, it's a valuable commodity, if you will, to be able to have a sawmill. So Marshall is hired by Sutter to build this sawmill, and they're building this thing. There's guys working on it. There's uh, other loser receptions going on here that uh, Marshall used to uh, be under the command of Fremont. We've talked about him with the whole Spanish-American War. The man who pretty much stole California. Yeah, <laughs> pretty yeah. much stole California, was court-martialed, and he's an interesting... There's a lot of interesting characters here that are all coming together. That This is, this is wild times in California. Big players that not a lot of people talk about, you That's know? Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're starting to get on the precipice of the uh, Mexican-American war. Abs absolutely, yeah. yeah we're well, getting there. I feel it. It's, well, it's, it's coming. You're, you're going to hit the crest, and that wave's going to crash. Marshall actually fights in the, uh, in the Mexican War, um, quits early before the, the peace is settled, if you will, with the, with the treaty. And he's working for Sutter. He goes out one morning to check out how things are coming along on this sawmill that he was hired to uh, engineer and build. And he discovers some shiny metal flakes in there and <laughs> starts banging on it with a rock to see whether it's malleable or not because it could be a couple of different things. But Fool's turns gold. out, a little pirate. Holy yeah. shit. Leftover from a Kesha concert. <laughs> It's gold. Glitter. It's gold. So he he goes back to Sutter, uh, and they're like, all right, let's keep this all hush-hush because um, we don't want this getting out. Less than a week later, they signed the peace treaty with Mexico, 
the, that now California is under direct U.S. control. That was part of the, uh, the, the peace accord, if you will. So now California is no longer a Spanish possession or a Mexican possession. It's a American possession, right? So, so when are you doing the American Loser podcast about Mexico? Uh, we've had a couple. No, like the country. That's <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, like they missed out on a lot of stuff. Well, we yeah. actually have a loserception throwback to one of our other episodes because we told the true story of Cinco de Mayo, which mm. oddly enough, old Emperor Norton is slightly involved in. A little bit. So, Coon, I'm telling you, when we this this seems scatterbrained right now, but as we slowly bring it all together. It's going to be like Tarantino type shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. So, so why are we talking are we, about? James are we going to talk Marshall? about the end first, and then the beginning, and then the middle? Or we might have been at the end already. <laughs> it's wild. This one's intense. James, Keep going, LP. Right, so you got something. I'm anxious to see what Kahuna's response is because you have one thing in particular that you found. Yeah, well, this guy James Marshall. I mean, he's he's a character himself, very much involved with with California history, with work or working or fighting with Fremont and everything else capturing California from the from the Mexicans uh, and here's our Jersey connection cones that John W. Marshall really started out uh, in life in Hopewell Township New Jersey part of Mercer County today um, and it's actually still within there his old family homestead is still known as Marshall's Corner in, in Hopewell Township, Whoa, New Jersey. Okay. Yeah, so we are was our the reception. center of the universe. It's not a bragging thing. It just it's just, just reality. It is. It's just a reality <laughs> situation. Um, but now Sutter and Marshall, they realize they've got gold, but they want to keep this quiet. And as I say, a couple of days later, they signed the treaty with, uh, with the Mexican government. So now California is the U.S. property. They want to keep this thing on the hush-hush, but then there's a, a merchant in the middle of San Francisco. San Francisco is like the place in California, but it's very sparsely populated at that particular point. You only had like maybe 750 Americans. Like it's a small town. It's a small, it's a small town, but it was, it's, it's claimed to... Uh, Give it 50 years it's like a, in an earthquake. Yeah, its ability, though, is th that it's on the seacoast. And to get to California, you're either going the overland route, and it was very difficult times to go overland, or you had to We've take a sailing video, ship, yeah. sail down to Panama, cross over the, the Isthmus of Panama, because there was no Panama Canal yet, and then take another ship going up the Pacific coast to San Francisco, or go all the way around to the bottom of South America and come up that way. So, or you could be Chinese and just get over there. Well, <laughs> this is this is what happened. Uh, that um, once word got out because there was a merchant in San Francisco who came up with some of this original gold. I don't know whether he was paid for goods, dry goods, or whatever, but he's running down the street shaking this vial of gold. Gold! Gold! And, like, people are going crazy. And then immediately there's a, the California gold rush. Um, and those who could get there first just overwhelmed San Francisco. you got people coming from Oregon. you got people coming from Chile. you got people coming from China. Um, the Sandwich Islands, which later became known as the Hawaiian Islands. So, uh, you know, they're all flooding into California as fast as they possibly could. Word eventually gets back to the east that, um, you know, gold was discovered in California. <coughs> Excuse me. We need mute buttons, Mike. Come gold, on. <laughs> gold was discovered in, uh, in California. And, and the Easterners are really not buying into it they're like oh yeah that's just another that's just another uh, um tale, tall tale of the west but then um the governor of the well the military governor of california starts to visit some of these gold fields because sutter's sawmill that this guy was supposed to be marshall was supposed to be building <laughs> he couldn't keep anybody there because as soon as they found out there's gold all the guys, out on their own. <laughs> all the guys that were working, quit like, and, and you know, yeah. let, me, let me buy a pick and a shovel exactly. here and, and, oh, and go for it. I'm going to work for you and make twelve cents an hour when I can go out and get this stuff on my own. Right, I can just pick it up out of the stream. Exactly. You know? um, so reports are going back to California. Um, the military governor of California 
um, sends word back east with some of the actual gold. Of course, it takes a couple of months before it finally gets back to to Washington. Speaking but then uh, Polk, <laughs> uh, President Polk, right, at James his K. Yeah, James K. And he was the guy that was really instrumental in starting the whole Mexican War. Anyhow, he was picking a fight with Mexico to begin with so that they could annex Texas and the rest of the, the Southwest. Um, in his State of the Union address, says that, yeah, it's true. I've got it from a, you know, a, 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 viable, a, a verifiable source that, uh, that there is definitely a gold strike there. And you know, whether he's trying to toot his own horn, uh, see, it was pretty good, pretty good deal for us to go to war with Mexico. Now we got California, and they just discovered gold there. So, you know, that was a pretty amazing thing. Um, but then with that, like the floodgates just opened, that um, California went, for, uh, uh, San Francisco went from maybe, you know, 1,000 people to within a year's time is now up to 100,000 people in San Francisco. It's a, it's That's a shit show. That's what you call a boom. Yeah, it's yeah. a boom. It's a shit show, though. I mean, people are camping out. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. Any sense of It's a hot town now, though. It's, it's, it's definitely the... If you had a time machine, would you want to go there right as that was happening? Like, to sit there and be a resident of San Francisco in, like, late 48... Not be involved in the gold. Just be like the guy that ran the bar. Yeah, like just a, watch a, a all Jack that, London type character. Just, just watch all notes. that shit that was going down. You're like, oh my, there's there's hookers that just live on the street. Like, <laughs> what right. are we doing here? Yeah, it's, uh, just it's watch called Vegas. Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Vegas. Yeah. 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 The world just turns to shit. <laughs> so San Francisco was early Vegas. Okay. A little bit to a degree. Now, LP, do you have anything else? Because now I want to talk about one of their most famous residents is arriving around this time. Uh, yeah, well, it just, it, it's certainly a boom town. Things, I mean, people are asking for whatever prices for anything. You know, the dry goods, the dry goods market for picks and shovels for clothing, for anything. Again, it has to be um, brought in primarily by ship because there was no better way of getting there. Um, so, and you could ask exorbitant prices and guys were making money hand over fist. What, what do you there got, was Eric? A, there was a report that... Uh, Two guys, two miners, um, within seven days, when that gold was first discovered, they made seventeen thousand dollars in gold in seven days. Now that was eighteen forty nine numbers. We busted out the inflation calculator yeah. for later, oh, by the way. So. Seventeen thousand dollars in seven days would calculate to today twenty twenty money five hundred and sixty one thousand. So that's not a bad week's take. Not huh? a, no. <laughs> nah. I, I think we kind of stumbled back upon this because I had done research on Norton for, you know, little projects that I've had in the hopper for a while. But we were talking, uh, you know, just bullshitting back and forth as friends about HBO shows. And you were rewatching Oz, and I had finally got access to rewatch the Deadwood movie. Fantastic. And, you know, this us talking back and forth about Deadwood and the gold rush over there, that's kind of what sparked my mind to come back to this Emperor Norton thing because we're sitting there in, you know, San Francisco at that point in time where we're in the gold rush, but he's not, like, really there yet. He's just trying to make whatever he can from it, and I bring it up to you, and you're like, this guy? I didn't even know. Nope. Uh, and there's a character that, that reminds me of it. In, uh, and by the way, this guy that we're about to talk about too, Dad, a uh, ton of literary references as well. Yes. So th this guy becomes legendary. But I want you to properly set up San Fran before we talk about the toast of the town on his way in. Well, as far as the population, I mean, in 1846, um, California's total population was 6,500. 6,500 Californias. In other words, people of Spanish or Mexican descent. There's probably 700 foreigners that are primarily Americans, and then maybe 150,000 uh, Native Americans, whose numbers have already been cut in half since the Spanish arrival in 1769. So the Spanish killed off half the Native Americans. They're down to about 150. There's maybe 700 yeah, uh, primarily right. American foreigners there, and then 6,500 uh Californians, native Cal well, not native Californians, but Californians of, of Spanish or Mexican descent. So, 
you know, it's not a densely pop. It's not as it is today, one of the yeah. most populated but states. But it's growing at this point. But once gold is discovered, San Francisco alone had over 100,000 people. So, Oh, wow. You know. And was that shift like... That's, that's within one year's time. Oh, yeah. It, it was, went from... That was about... That was literally what I was about Just to ask a small you. little port city to uh, now you got 100,000 people in there. And like you were saying, I mean, it's, it's any kind of vice that you would, could possibly want because if you've got miners coming out of streams just by picking E-R. gold out of the streams. You know, Miners make... ERS, yeah. not ORS. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that yeah. the other type of miners were, you know, doing whatever they could possibly do over there because, I mean, it was a boom town. You can do yeah. whatever you want. It, it was the Wild West. Right, <laughs> and if you had pockets full of gold, there was going to be somebody to help you alleviate that burden of all that gold <laughs> in your pocket. <laughs> Now, don't let me skip over anything else you had, LP, but no, no, I want uh, Our boys got to arrive so on the scene. I do have a question for you, though, before you hop on. So, was, so was San Francisco technically the first major city in California, like the first one to primarily pop up? Or is that happening all over the coast of California at this point? Like, is, like, Los Angeles starting to come into the picture? Like, well, other cities and Fremont, stuff? Fremont, um, when he took over California, and, and if anyone has more info, jump in on this, but when, what Fremont's thing was pretty amazing. Uh, he was paid by the American government to go in there and start causing insurrection mm-hmm. amongst the locals. Like, hey, you know, this California thing's really great because Mexico's really, they're kind of jerk-offs, aren't they? They're always bossing us around, telling us what to do. It'd be kind of cool if we were our own thing. And people forget California was the Bear Republic for a couple of years before it was absorbed into the United States. And so, that's exactly who James Marshall with uh, Fremont was fighting. They, they, he was part of that whole exactly. Bear State uh, insurrection. <laughs> That's like Eric said. California is pretty much it's a it's a heist, an American heist of sorts. <laughs> so if you picture De Niro and Kilmer and Heat coming in, it's like well, it's where's uh, the van? What's <laughs> where, where's the van? Right. What's the target, California? It's oh. the Monroe Doctrine uh, exemplified that hey, we want that shit. So we're taking it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mind if we dance with your dates? <laughs> right. There you go. There you go. There's a pallet of bricks sitting right over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that being said, now we've set the scene. All right. Excellent work as always, LP. Um, and we've set the scene. It's now time for the, the main character of today's episode to arrive on foot in Imagine. San Francisco. He's here, ladies and gentlemen. The one, <laughs> the only. Joshua A. Norton. He is a he is a pisser, dude. So he shows up in San Francisco with about forty thousand dollars to his name, which adjusted for inflation is one point three million dollars in twenty twenty money. And his name is Josh Norton. (laughs) (laughs) So the money is uh, assumed to be either from his father's fortune or possibly uh, his own early successes in trades in South Africa. So regardless of whether or not it's just daddy's money or not, Norton does go to work and quickly establishes himself as a player in the game amongst the elites and the wealthy of San Francisco. Okay. He's a speculator, for sure. I mean, you he's know coming he's in and he's, all, got, he's got some coin of his own. and Putting all the cards on the table. Right. <laughs> I mean, people are, are land grabbing. And, uh, you know, Sutter's Mill, um, where the first gold was discovered, that gets completely overrun by, by people. Although Sutter owned the property, it gets so overrun by people just – Get out of the way. You know, I'm in this stream. I'm, I'm working here kind of a thing. And, and Native Americans are getting slaughtered. Um, it's a real shit show. Uh, just another little loserception here, too. That Sutter's Mill, that, that whole community that he was trying to establish, we had a loserception there because oh, if yeah. you remember the Donner Party, um, that was one of the first contacts that they tried to get to as they were coming through the Sierra Nevadas. Two episodes in a row with, with Donner Party connections. We, we alienated yeah. some people. Donner Party is one of our best episodes. If you haven't listened to it, please listen back to it. But we alienated a few people because we decided it would be hilarious to eat uh, uh, chicken wings while we were recording. I and, just said I'm hungry. And, and about halfway through the episode, we were we felt so bad for the people of the Donner Party. We're like, this got less funny as it went, didn't it? Yeah. Really? yeah. yeah. Like, I think this we even made a quick. point as soon as we wrapped up that episode. We were like... Man, those wings stopped getting eaten around 30 minutes ago, didn't they? Like, it, it, it got real quiet. Yeah. <laughs> so Donner Party, uh, obviously our loserception there. Um, now we got to tackle the boy. 
We got it. We yeah, got all right. It. I'm sorry. No, 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 dude. This is great. This is important because we like to set. You want to say it, Dad? What's your favorite word we taught you? The zeitgeist. You know it. I do have a question about our boy at this time. So I was making the joke that he was putting all the cards on the table to show that he was a big player. Now, is this the type of story where it's starting to backfire on him for showing all these cards? Or is it going to start to play in the favor in the beginning and then lose track? Or What is comedy? <laughs> <laughs> Timing. <laughs> Timing, my friends. <laughs> Correct. Um, so <laughs> everyone's right on this, and it's it's great too because as I wrote this episode, Kahuna, I I had I have the imagery in my head of the moments when you're just like, what? Because it, it brings me joy in my heart. Okay, <laughs> that, we know you you literally <laughs> say it on the show. You're like, people wait for Kahuna's jaw drop moment because <laughs> it's true. I love learning these things, especially this dude because I've never heard of him in my the life. The rest of the episode is essentially jaw drop after jaw drop. Okay, so um, <laughs> you, now you already had me with the Vernon Supreme comparison. Like I'm excited. <laughs> like I'm trying. To, I'm. We haven't even gotten there yet. I know, like, but like wait, you wait. set it up, and why I'm like, he, why is he wearing a boot now? <laughs> 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 well that's, this that's not why if you tr like if if we were telling all right let's say this so if this was like a superhero origin story we are in a shared universe you know that they're comic book guys mm -hmm. so if uh the someday emperor norton uh is going to become a superhero called emperor norton he is still just going by joshua at this time okay so he's, he hasn't he's, lost his uncle ben yet that's right no. there's no radioactive spider has bit him um, okay. But now he hasn't it isn't stolen a suit from Hank Pym. Oh man! <laughs> it's worth mentioning, though. By the way, we did not say Iron Man. He had forty thousand dollars to his name when he arrived, which we said was adjusted for inflation, quite a bit of money. And he artfully and uh, carefully and skillfully turns that into a fortune of back then money, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So he oh, duplicates. Oh, so he's rolling in it. He would have been a, a modern-day multimillionaire in a town that's uh, just a boom town, like you said, Dad. So yeah, I'm going to let the listeners do the math because uh, I can't in my head. But don't worry, um, he's got screw you money, basically. Right. You know, 1849 to 2020, you're multiplying whatever they made by about 33. So do the math. Well, dollars that's your and cents. Assignment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Knee deep in San Fran. <laughs> he's a single man, by the way. Keep that in mind. Imagine being oh, our guy's a bachelor. Yes, yeah, he, a he's bachelor, got a, few money for a sure. millionaire bachelor in one of the boomtown, very wealthy, prosperous places. There's some cal. I don't know. Did Katy Perry ever do a song about what girls look like out there? California. Yep, that I, didn't start I, out of nowhere. I believe that might have been a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did not all have cupcake boobs, though. Uh, I. I <laughs> I knew a girl from California. I was like, you're not really from Cali. You don't have cupcake boobs. And she goes, that was a video, and Snoop Dogg was in it. You're a moron. <laughs> but was she wearing apple-bottom jeans? You know that part boots was true. Boots with the fur? <laughs> well, if you want to talk about a song, My Darling Clementine came from the, from the 49ers. No the shit. Ah. In, a cavern, in, a, in, a, in a canyon in a cavern, excavation, excavation for a mine. Well, um... That's worth noting. You have, I, I, <laughs> Sorry. No, I didn't. U useless trivia. No, I, I no. You stumped me. <laughs> that was that was written long after that, but uh, it was based on the uh, the forty nine the gold rush of forty nine. So let's get to his genesis moment here. I think yeah, this is yeah, important. Yeah. Um, Build it something. You got a little enough. invisible touch for us. You know it. Uh, dollars and cents might not be able to be proven uh, for his status back then, but he was obviously one of the high society members of San Francisco. It was never in doubt. By the end of just three years in San Francisco, the future emperor was one of the most highly respected figures in the entire city. His monetary success was about to hit a few bumps in the road, however. In 1952, Norton found himself with what Wait, seemed like... What year? 1952. 19? 1850. I do that all the time on the Holy show. You're right. Christ. You're right, dude. Yeah, I was, like, I, I was hanging out with man. Fonzie? Yeah. <laughs> hey. Hey. hey, Emperor N, what are you up to? <laughs> um, I do that all the time. Good catch. Good catch. Uh, 1852, Norton finds himself with what seems like a genius business opportunity. Okay? It was. So uh, you've seen, uh, I mean, uh, on, again, another Honeymooners reference. How many scams did those guys come up with <laughs> for Get Rich Quick? Norton, let me tell you what we're going to do. Can it corn up? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the deal. By adhering to the bedrock business principle, very sound business principle of supply and demand. Bedrock? Damn it. <laughs> bedrock. Wait, bedrock was basically the Honeymooners. 
as a animated Flintstones. Flintstones. This <laughs> so our boy is Fred Flint. No, we're trying to be Fred Flint. Uh, he's better than Fred. No. And it, 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 the he's more we Mr. get going Slate. here. He's more, yeah, Mr. Slate. There we go. So Norton finds out that China is experiencing a severe famine. Okay? Not so bad. China. Huh? Not red China. Not, Not red China, China, correct. Just China. China. Um, yeah, it's just it's China. Experiencing at this point. Uh, hard times. So, okay. so much so, in fact, that their, uh, their rice is now no longer available for export, that the populace needs that in order to survive. So, China's not selling any rice right now. And uh, you have a little thing going on here where a famine in China, almost a butterfly effect type thing, where it's affecting, you know, a couple other uh, things going on uh, on the other side of the world, that uh, the price of rice in San Francisco because of the famine in China, now goes up from four cents per pound to 36 cents per pound. Uh, as our sports betting aficionados have already done the math in their head, <laughs> that is a plus 900 if you want to bet the over. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that That's is quick. yeah 900% increase per pound. So if you're dumb like me, that means if it used to be a dollar store, it's now a $9 store. <laughs> okay? So uh, pretty great vi- uh, business venture, but at least on paper. Norton now finds out that there's a ship coming in. A little insider trading for old Martha Stewart over here, right? Um, a ship is returning to San Francisco shortly, containing nothing but rice from Peru. All right? China ain't selling it, but Peru's got it. Supply and demand. Who do you think is going to make the money here? So there's a Peru. huge demand. Exactly. <laughs> Poor <laughs> Peru. They never get anything. Um, but uh, the, some of the best food I've ever had, I'll say that much. Um, there was a huge demand for rice where Norton lived. After all, as Kahuna can tell you, rice aroni is what? Delicious. The San Francisco treat. The San Francisco, Francisco <laughs> treat. They're changing that. Wow. Wait, what? That. San Francisco treat. You're kidding me. Emperor Norton would not stand for this. Um, <laughs> See, like, uh, I was just quoting something about Marianne. <laughs> So Norton agrees that he's going to buy. You want to talk about a setup here. This is brilliant. He says he's going to buy the entire shipment of rice. So every every kernel of rice, a kernel, grain of rice. Grain. On the, yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, I don't need a whole lot of that. It's not keto, all right? Uh, <laughs> but he decides he's going to buy the entire shipload uh, worth of rice in hopes that he can now corner the market and be the kingpin of rice in San Francisco. Rice all right? is nice. Had this worked out, Norton might have been one of the richest men in the city. However, For the world. <laughs> unfortunately, after forking over twenty-five thousand dollars of eighteen sixties money, yep, that's that's dropping big, big bucks. I believe we adjust. Oh yeah, adjusted for inflation, eight hundred thousand dollars. He goes, "This is it. This is my ship has come in." Pun intended. Okay, eight hundred thousand dollars. He's ready for this shit. It's going to come into San Francisco Bay with overflowing all this desired rice, and this is going to swell the availability, all right? You can't wait for this. It's going to go nuts. He's going to have, literally, be the, the kingpin, like we said. We're going to have to stir macaroni into it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately for uh, old insider trading, Mr. Norton over here, and his massive get-rich-quick scheme, get-richer-quick scheme, really. He wasn't inside enough. Nope. Uh, (laughs) Several other ships pull into San Francisco Bay, overflowing with more of the much-desired rice, that there's now an overabundance of rice, dropping it down to three cents per pound, one cent less than what it was once worth. So if you put 25,000 out, 25,000 out, and then they take away (laughs) one cent, I mean, it's, it's brutal. Crap, oh. you lose. Yeah. <laughs> you just rolled the dice and it do came not up pass crash. those. Do not collect $200. Remember yeah. the scene in Breaking Bad when Walter White goes nuts and is just laughing, falling on the bottom of his, uh, in his, his basement, if you will, or under the, it's It has to be like that kind of moment for him, right? Is that fair to say, Eric? I would think so. <laughs> <laughs> laughing we, madness type yes. deal? I, mean, I don't know how everyone's lives are who listen to the podcast or those that sit around this table, but we've all been at that point in one point in time where you're like, it can't get any worse, can it? It really can't. <laughs> right. No, there's no possible way. But it always does. Who thought that I could be the guest in my own house? <laughs> <laughs> For those who know. Um, Norton uh, goes apeshit, Okay. Absolute ape shit. So. Indeed, he tries to void the contract under the claim that the shipment quality was exaggerated. Okay, uh, but he's unable to get his money back. They're like, "Nah, too late, dude. You bought everything." That's right. Yeah. You bought the ship. So, um, and it, it's caveat a, emptor. Exactly. <laughs> I hate when you're smart. All right, it, it annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> my apologies. I have alcohol in my system. 
<laughs> what did I tell you? He's going to be doing poems towards the end of this. Um, but Why did I turn into Hunter S. Thompson? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, he goes nuts here. He's trying to fight the guys. It's a little bit of a legal battle here. Now, with nearly a million dollars worth of rice that is now worth less than it was before. Right. Okay, It's worth rice. It, exactly. <laughs> it, it ain't really even worth that. Norton, it's an ancient grain, though. It's, a <laughs> it's the ballast in the ship right now. True. And uh, Norton is seeking legal action, right? So he spends the next three years of his life uh, descending into possible madness and certainly the destruction of his own personal wealth in trying to right this wrong. It's like, you, no, no, I'm standing. This is wrong. What it was done to me, I refuse to go down quietly. And uh, he had yeah, success. He's fighting a fight, though, with, with court battles. I mean, he's he's... Litigation, correct. Okay. He's, so. he's showing his character there, though. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, he's going, hey, listen, listen. Like, I, yeah, I bought it because it was going to be expensive, but now it's not expensive. So, like, fuck you. I'm suing you. <laughs> exactly. And uh, he's originally, by the way, successful in the lower courts. A little crazy. And uh, eventually the case. A little? Yeah, he goes up and up the ladder of the courts until eventually, Dad, who winds up. Uh, dealing with him in making a decision in finality. Well, his case goes to the California Supreme Court, and they don't find for him. They find for the for the rice the rice people. So he lost. He lost his case, and he's basically you know destitute over this. I mean, he's he's penniless. He lost it all. Loses everything. And what final uh, judicial system winds up siding against him? The states, the California state California Supreme state. Court. Yeah, and uh, by the way, one of the justices sitting on that, did you get this part? No, I did not. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't re- I didn't realize Ruth was that old. No, <laughs> she was old, it, but not that old. No, that, that part is our false fact of the week. <laughs> but right. uh, as Eric has gone to the bathroom, which is uh, that, that's uh, as great as alcohol is, that's guys. That's part of the course, though. That's part of the course. I'm sure my father will be leaving shortly. Everyone's drinking but me, all right? <laughs> but... Uh, Norton winds up getting uh, uh, pretty much told, hey, buddy, uh, you're not getting a win here, okay? Unfortunately, they waited long enough until he spent a second fortune trying to get his first fortune back. Right. So if you combine the loss of most of his wealth, the banks now seizing his home and his properties for payment because he's defaulting on loans, his relocation from being one of the most wealthy men in a wealthy city to now living in a working class, I call it a boarding home. What's the right term, Dad? Flop house. A flop house. Um, and the delirium of being lost in years of court battles, which if you've ever dealt with the legal system in this country, it's not hard to figure out how a guy loses his mind doing so. What else can you do at that point, Kahuna, than take out an ad in the paper declaring yourself the Emperor of America? <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. You're going to think wait, I left something wait, out, wait, but wait, I didn't. We were here, and you just jumped up to here. You just jumped up three stories in one step. What just happened? Yep. Uh, the legal system is what happened. Yeah, the legal system has, in his mind, failed him. Okay. Right? Uh, he's lost millions of dollars. Okay, he's now living in, you know, pretty much... Uh, he's living in a, a boarding ste- house. A step above home. No, he's not in a boarding house. He's in a flop house, that's, which is even a couple of steps down from a boarding house. Oh, yeah. wow. Boarding house people don't let their kids play with flop house kids. That's how bad it is. <laughs> oh, God. So... Damn. So on September 17th, 1859, 18, emphasis, uh, the following proclamation was made via several San Francisco newspapers and handed out uh, to citizens uh, on the street as they were passing by. Uh, And I quote. Is this it? Is this the actual proclamation? He's got a bunch of his have been kept and uh, are in um, the care of museums out in San Francisco. I'm ready to go for the quote here. I pulled this out. We're going to give him uh, everything. I got it, Dad. Okay. Uh, um, My at favorite the... part is what's in caps. Yeah. You can, like, hear it in his voice. <laughs> I, w- for our last segment of the show, we always throw to Kahuna to tell us who would play this guy in a movie for his casting couch. Mm. So I can't wait to see who he's going to pick. But uh, keep in mind, try to figure out somebody who's going to be able to pull off this. <clears throat> okay. At the peremptory request and desire of a large majority of the citizens of these United States, I, Joshua Norton, formerly of Algoa Bay, Cape of Good Hope, and now for the last nine years and ten months past of San Francisco, California, declare and uh, proclaim myself emperor of these United States. And in virtue of the authority thereby invested me, do hereby order and direct 
the representatives of the different states of the Union to assemble in Musical Hall of this city on the first day of February. Next, then and there to make such alterations to the existing laws of the Union as may ameliorate the evils under which the country is laboring and thereby cause confidence to exist both at home and abroad in our stability and integrity. Signed, Norton One. Emperor of the United States. <laughs> man made his own money. It gets... Th- this is just hit after hit, okay? This is the home run derby section of this podcast. Um, yeah, this was, uh, you know... He wasn't happy with the way the courts uh, found his case, so screw you guys. I now declare myself Emperor of these United States. I'm and out of we're order. we're calling the meeting. We're calling the meeting... To be here in San Francisco, and you know he's running. You he's running it. the show. <laughs> right, he's my emperor now. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> exactly. Well played. Well played. That's the reference. So there you have it. Norton tried to give us rice, and when we had none of it, and it backfired on him. So in turn, he found, as a businessman does, find another void in the market. America has a severe lack of emperors around this time. <laughs> right. There you go. It's all supply and demand. Uh, so old Norton's the man for the job. Hold on. I, I just want to point something out that I just pulled up because it's one of the funniest things in these pictures. So it, there's a photo of this hanging up somewhere in San Francisco, and it says, pause, traveler, and be grateful to Norton the first. Well, we're, we're well, actually we'll get into that. get to that. Yeah. Wait, that's a whole thing? Oh, that's yeah. For oh, real. God, come you, on. You stumbled on something that, that actually makes this man's legacy something to behold. Yep. Okay, let's hear this. So, uh, Norton wouldn't just stop there, though. So, uh, as people who know, who have listened to the show before, specifically our Cinco de Mayo episode, south of California, a guy by the name of Napoleon III, Napoleon, you know... One, the third. Technically, depending on how you want to refer to him. Uh, he's a cousin of Bonaparte, I believe. Yeah, right. um, Had just invaded Mexico. So the United States was remaining neutral due to the brewing civil war and other affairs, but kept a very close eye on the events. The diehard fans of our show will know in our earnest uh, uh, episode about the true story of Cinco de Mayo that, in short, France is going to lead a multinational force to invade Mexico for not paying their debts. The French wind up being the only power willing to pursue this, though. The other, you know, the Spanish and the British kind of... Back out. Yeah, slowly. <laughs> and they attempt to install an Austrian royal family member as the emperor of Mexico, Maximilian. So if you want to know more about that guy, check out that episode, too. It's one of my favorite no, stories. Loser Loserception. Yeah, that's Loserception for you, baby. Um, this would not sit well, though, the idea of an emperor in Mexico with America's emperor, all right, who quickly <laughs> added to his title upon N- Napoleon III invading. He now decides that it's not just Norton I, emperor of the United States. What's his new tagline, Eric? Emperor Norton protector, uh, emperor of the United States and protector of Mexico. <laughs> now, did there he, ever... he is in California. Yep. In, in uh, San Nor Francisco. Cal, Nor Cal. <laughs> yep. he's, he's, he's not hanging out in, you know, Tijuana, you know, San Diego area. <laughs> right, right, yeah, right. No, no, I'm no, protecting no. Mexico. No, he's up all the way. You know, where the Raiders used to play after, <laughs> you know, like, uh, uh, like six months ago. Truth. He's hanging out there with the 49ers and the Raiders and going, yeah, no, I got that down there. We'll be fine. <laughs> That's right. We'll take Don't care worry of that. about that. Now, Kahuna's trying to, to do the math in his head to figure out the, the, the logic mileage? behind this, and there's none. There's no logic here. <laughs> no, no. Right. Okay. Um, he just felt like it. It's somewhere in his they, mind. They flexed on him, and he, and he was like, it, Psh, mine. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's not your, mine. <laughs> it's not yours. It's mine. Okay. It, the other thing wasn't his either. Though. Is this just one of those things where we're just gonna have to just throw logic out the door? Yes. And it's just kind of just embrace and the madness train that is Willy Wonka's boat. Okay, I'm uh, cool with this. It, another reference. Willy Wonka's a good one here, but I'll, I'll throw you this one, buddy. <laughs> if it sounds like the guy's gone off the deep end, anyone who follows conspiracy theories and/or has watched Alice in Wonderland would know. Not only have you gone mad, but all the best people are. <laughs> and it's a land of. Pure imagination. <laughs> <laughs> so, so San Francisco's the land of the mad at this point. Yeah, okay. so they're, they're printing well, his proclamations in the humor section for starters, by the way. <laughs> yeah, okay. then, it, then it goes to, to uh, you know, main, mainline news here. And I, I think that was another point that we really ought to cover here is that this guy proclaims himself. Everybody, everybody in San Francisco knew this guy. You know, he's, he's a local. Prominent figure. Right, he's a, he's a local prominent figure. 
they all probably realize that this guy is an out and out wackadoodle, but they take all of his proclamations and they print them in the newspaper. So he's really a media. He's a creation of the media. That so he's so like he you're is. reading through the newspaper, go to the funny section. You got your peanuts. You got your Garfield. You got your Emperor Norton. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Got your Vermin Supreme. No. Vermin Supreme. <laughs> it, might, it might be in the local news section or, uh, you oh know, the living, the living section. I like his attitude. You're, it's just like, I'm the protector of Mexico now. But you, you have nothing to... I'm the protector of I Mexico I protect now. Mexico. Well, he saw the re- he saw the wrongdoings with, uh, with the French coming in trying to put an undue uh, outside pressure on Mexico. So no, we have kind of, rightfully yeah. stepped what up. Of, what kind of ship was coming in with his rice? Well, it, I believe it would have been... You might know something I don't here. It's a Peruvian ship, right? Peruvian ship, At copy. that point in time, who controlled Peru? I'm assuming the Spanish. It was the French. No shit. Ah. Interesting. And now we're mad. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy's great. We, we once um, threw Kahuna for a loop. He holds we t- grudges. Oh, he, this guy definitely holds grudges. We once threw uh, the Kahuna for a loop because we told him... Uh, it was a fact that threw me for a loop when I first found out that no... Uh, king of England ever actually visited America while we were under the jurisdiction of, of that monarch. Yeah. Right? So that being no said... No taxation without representation exactly. was a thing for a reason. So now, imagine that this guy's the protector of Mexico. Does he ever step foot in Mexico? No. No. <laughs> well, I mean, Mexico's border was kind of shifting at that point in time. Also it true. Never, it never went as far north as San Francisco. Right. Ever. But well, I disagree on that. Alta California went all the way up into or, almost into Oregon because prior to the Spanish American, uh, the Mexican American War, um, it was that whole area was known as Alta uh, yeah. California, and that took in vast territories. But you know, it was no, it, no, that's was a, it that's was a it, fair point. Was it Mexican? Was it right. Russian? Was it British? <laughs> was it American? So I mean, that whole area was always. Uh, vague boundaries type of a thing but it's yeah. always fun when land is up for dispute on who actually controls it not yes. owns it controls it right there's a big difference between owning True. and control uh, again that's another one of the great shows on history channel was how the states got their shapes based off a lot of weird shits going Love on right that. now so check this out we got to play the hits here uh for old norton because we we finally set him up we don't want to be like batman begins where he doesn't become batman till the very end uh, so Kuhn has got a great picture of him up. We're going to cover his, his look here shortly. But uh, so now in uh, he is the emperor, declared emperor, eccentric and humorous, you know, kind of not laughed at, but, but in an in appreciative way. Uh, occasionally makes some very interesting points as he waxes philosophical over the city. Um, so Kahuna, in October of 1859, he abolished Congress. Just, we're done. <laughs> hey, you guys up there? Yeah, you're out. In a, in a royal type address... And a decree, Norton you claimed. Read it? Oh, I don't have it. Oh, um, it's so good. Norton claimed the politics of the Congress had negated and voided their use, so therefore uh, he ordered them to disperse and not return. Capitol Hill meetings are over by order of the Emperor. Um, so, if you want to figure out how serious he was about this, is this a madman who doesn't know what he's saying, or does he have a bit of you know a plan? Just four months later, the Emperor called for all concerned citizens under his domain to gather at the famed Platt's Music Hall, which he mentioned in his original decree, to help him remedy the evils he complains of. His next edict from the emperor admonished the Congress for violating his previous order (laughs) to to, 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 to shut down. You want to read it? Yeah, I'll I'll read it. Go for it. Er, Eric's got the decree here. Whereas a body of men calling themselves the National Congress are now in session with Washington City. A violation of our imperial edict of the 12th of October last. He's self-referencing his own edict, saying, and we we already were on record saying this, guys. Declaring that the Congress abolished, whereas it is necessary for the repose of our empire that the said decree should be strictly complied with. Now, therefore, (laughs) we do hereby order and direct Major General Scott, the commander-in-chief of our armies, Immediately upon receipt of this, that's just redundant shit right there. It's like, <laughs> dun, 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 oh, all the, the royal, I mean, he speaks like a lawyer at this yeah, point. Right. Mm. Immediately so, upon you're... receipt of this, our decree to proceed with a suitable force and clear these halls of Congress. So he's calling on the, the leader of the army, uh, Scott. General cl- Winfield Scott. General for Winfield Scott, the, the hero of the Mexican-American War. 
to clear Congress out of there. He wrote 36 lines to say one thing. Right, right. <laughs> Scotty yeah. boy, what are you doing? Get I think out it's of just fascinating that basically you got a homeless guy. <laughs> uh, absolute. He's a homeless guy. I mean, to live in a flop house is one step off mm-hmm. of being living on the street. Really, what it amounted to. Your question before home. about the boarding house. Right? No, he, there was nobody overseeing him. He was his own man. But as a homeless guy, a complete wackadoodle. But everybody kind of loved this guy, and well, that's part of was show. was playing up to up to him, kind of a thing. Uh, so that they is, accepted him now, as as a local character. Did, did okay. We, did we bring up the fact that? He printed his own money yet? It's coming. Yeah. So yeah. this guy's Pee Wee Herman the first, basically. Like oh. he cre- he creates like his own little cult following in the beginning, and then people just kind of latch on to his lunacy. I was gonna say, uh, actually, yeah. the, the more we describe him, then the better we can come up with the references because it, it's there's so many layers. It's it's wild. He's an onion. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, LP, jump in when you got it here. Um, but I, I did want to say this real quickly. That was his next edict, uh, was he ordered, like we said, Civil War General Winfield Scott to uh, go to Capitol Hill and disperse the illegal Congress, <laughs> violating the emperor's orders. All right. Clear he was ignored. <laughs> he gets ignored, but not right. silenced. The emperor battles the government and their lack of uh, respect for his crown the rest of his life. He has four other letters coming forth now that decree the banning of political parties. Uh, that that, uh, that one I want to throw to you for a second yeah, for, Eric. That's a fun um, it's pretty great, but we do have to hit this one other part first because my father and I couldn't stop laughing last night reading <laughs> about this one. Um, so one of his other letters, Kahuna, he bans political parties. He says uh, he has now outlawed Republicans and Democrats. You're over. <laughs> this man's a visionary. You're out of <laughs> here. All right? No Congress, no political parties, Emperor Norton presiding. <laughs> right. He's on both sides of the aisle. All yes. of you guys are out. The, I'm, I'm the emperor here. <laughs> okay. This I'll is make my the favorite, decisions. My favorite part of this whole thing, this is the one I got excited <laughs> on the ride down to talk about. Kahuna, he writes a letter to the head of the Protestant church, oh, and, and the same letter is sent to the Pope, saying that if they endorse his em- imperial crown, he will stop the American Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> what? Are you serious? I'm being 100% no. this is, serious. This yeah. is, it's no. proven. This is proven. That is he, this like, oh my God. So imagine the Pope, some old Italian. <laughs> well, America, they're going to, I thought they had a president. <laughs> I hear about an emperor now. He's telling me a uh, stop of the Civil War. Everybody dying over there. I know. <laughs> it's no good. Yeah, it's no good. <laughs> But um, so yeah, he, but I think that the whole city really just kind of embraces this guy. That you know, everybody, he, you, San you Francisco, gotta weird. realize he's, that he's so batshit that you gotta get behind. <laughs> right, right. Because he's not, he's not harmful. Nope. As as proven in a later story. Everything that he's saying might not make sense, but it might make a little bit of sense depending on your ideology. So like that kind of guy, you just. You get behind. Which right. It's like, you know what? Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll fuck with you. Whatever you want to tell me, I'll take it with a grain of salt and go, you know what? That crazy ass bastard, <laughs> he said some crazy stuff to me today. And I'll go back home and I'll talk to Millicent, my wife, and everything will be fine. Yeah. And we'll joke about how Norton the First was roaming around the hills of San Francisco, spouting his bullshit. And it was fun. How much would you have a good time, though, if this guy was in New York and we saw him, like, in between shows? Like, if he's if he's standing between two clubs and we say, who's that we guy proclaiming? We know this person yes, already. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, the guy, and then we just get to explain to a new guy, like a new comic that's coming around, just be like, oh, yeah, that's the emperor. That's move. You were saying, by the way, finish. No, I was just saying that, uh, you know, he, his celebrity grows. Um, the newspapers take him off of the uh, you know the comedy section and put him into you know real real time news type of a thing. So his celebrity and status is growing within the within the city. Um, people want to have their photos taken with him. He's an imperial dress because uh, some of the local military gave him this. This is great. This army and navy uh, uniform with the epaulets, and he's walking around town with this. Uh, uh, Saber and and you know he's he's really dressing the part. Did, did I, I have a that a, if he's a quick... an emperor, he's dressing the part. Um, uh, they actually make up little Norton dolls 
um, like souvenir dolls that the, some of the tourists and stuff can buy. We got to set what he looks dolls. like, though, LP. Real quick, we got to set what he looks like. This is the the way that I think we can convey it to the audience. Is his uh, again? It, it's an army blue. Uh, or navy blue uh, uniform, right? Right. And he's got that. He's got gold epaulets on his shoulders. He's got a saber, right? He's got a beaver hat with a red feather in it. So from the neck down, picture Ulysses S. Grant during the Civil War, <laughs> from with the head of Kid Rock on the uh, uh, Devil was, Without a Cause yeah, album. I was gonna say mid '80s rapper, like Flavor Flav's head on, <laughs> like not not the complexion, of course, but you know, like his attire. Like, the only thing that was missing is the alarm clock. If, if he had the alarm clock, it would not be uh, too far of a stretch, to be, to be honest. I mean, there is you a know little... what time it is. <laughs> <laughs> there is a, a digital underground kind See, of thing. See, I was thinking more, when I saw the photo of uh, his attire, I was thinking more of, uh, you know, Ralph Crandom and, and Ed Norton uh, going to the Royal Order of uh, Raccoons meeting, <laughs> all dressed up, except they didn't have the raccoon hat. He had the big uh, army, uh, the well, army hat. He also had the stovepipe hat. Correct. With the peacock feathers. The, oh, peacock just feathers. found it. Right. There it is. Right. Dude, Which I wonder. Point in time is like that's you know, strut your stuff. dashing. That's, right, you're that's dashing. swag right, there. <laughs> right. And that same co uh, coat you were talking about, Dad. When it got too raggedy, um, the city council of uh, San Francisco paid for a new one to be made for him. So they, they the city literally just started taking oh, care yeah, of this they, guy. They, they, He's an ambassador. He became now. one of his own. You know, one of their own. Talk about uh, the dolls again. Uh, Norton dolls found their way into shops across the cities that they were so, so, um, selling souvenirs. This dolls. guy's got merch. Good for him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, like, you go down into uh, southern Manhattan, you might be selling, like, the, sta the little Statue of Liberty. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I just get a little right? Emperor well, Norton they doll. They got a little Emperor Norton doll. So uh, theater owners were saving him seats for opening nights of every play. <laughs> Local Imagine. train and ferry companies let them ride free of charge. Let's let's rewind this for half a second and put it in modern times. Can you imagine the craziest homeless person in New York getting seats reserved for Hamilton today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what was happening. Right. Uh, and meanwhile, this guy's oh. got no money. Oh. He has no money. So he decides that somebody's going to print but people Emperor just Norton love him. money up for him. So he, he prints up his own currency prints up his own money so he would go into a restaurant and you know have a nice meal and pay he's with norton dollars. emperor norton dollars he's got norton bucks <laughs> right got monopoly which is <laughs> monopoly money. Yeah, exactly exactly um i know, mean it's a collector's item now it is and actually uh those uh um those norton dollars are very uh very treasured uh, keepsakes for um, California people. That it, the currency is still highly sought after today. That uh, the some Norton of them are still hanging around. The Norton dollars, right? If you were a um, tourist, you could buy uh, imperial bonds from him with a seven percent rack up. So yeah, Norton Norton the first imperial IOUs are uh, still collectors' items uh, in the uh, coin and, and money uh, crowd. Wow. So people would la so people would latch on to him because of like I mean yeah, he is eccentric. It is the crazy homeless man uh, well, type scenario, but he had city. yeah, he had pride for his city, but it also seemed like he uh, even in his lunacy was trying to do better in the in with the country and stuff right. like that. Let, so let I can Erica, understand yeah. why people would latch on to it. Totally. I I had so I like, got to say this one too cuz um there was one particular instance where an overzealous police officer uh, arrested the guy on a vagrancy charge. <laughs> All right. Well, th with the intention, keep say what the intention of the arrest was. I don't know what the intention was. Go for it. Well, uh, the uh, intent. Uh, first of all, there was a weird thing going on back then, where the cops in San Francisco were largely private employees. They were hired by the wealthy to police their neighborhood. Oh, I got and they, you. And right. they were also uh, hired by businesses to protect them. Not too far removed from like a Pinkerton type agency coming in as right. your enforcement. So, Wait, enforcers in San Francisco? It, exactly. It was, uh, it was interesting with that one. So these guys, uh, the one guy who's, um, I, I forget his name. Uh, do you have the name in front of you, Dad? Armand something? No, I don't. He winds up making the arrest. And he arrests Emperor Norton, right. and people are in like they are enraged. Now the guy was not making a mean arrest. His intention was to take the guy and bring him to a mental facility, which, by the way, Get not him some help. <laughs> yeah, not exactly like a nice therapeutic uh, calming fountain back then. It was mostly like, hey, we're gonna jam this knife in you until you stop saying weird shit. <laughs> right. Um, right. So 
they they take well, him yeah, away. There was no electricity. Yeah, and there's uh, <laughs> and there's <laughs> right. Could that have was been mean. Worse. That was mean. Um, <laughs> so they take the guy away, and the city is outraged that people are um, getting upset. They're writing nonstop letters to the newspapers. They're petitioning uh, all sorts of uh, uh, facets of government. And they wind up saying one of the, the most poignant ones. Do you have the quote there, Dad? Yeah, one writer defended him, um, arguing that, quote, since he has worn the imperial purple, he has shed no blood, robbed nobody, and despoiled the country of no one, which is more than can be said for his fellows in that line. So, Admirable. As far so, as wow. compared to other politicians, this guy's, this guy's righteous. Yeah, this is the only politician that's not robbing us is pretty much what they said. <laughs> yeah. So they bring him in. Now I'm going to set up Eric here for a home run. Uh, again, like we said, this is the Derby, okay? My favorite part of this guy is if you envision him in his, his you know, emperor outfit with the, you know, he has his sword, he has his, uh, you know, uh, epaulets on his gold, uh, his blue uh, military uniform, and his beaver hat with uh, all sorts of adornments. Now, Or the stovepipe with the... Peacock exactly. Fighters. That's right. my favorite. <laughs> you got to go with uh, style. You got to go with what sells, baby. I mean, uh, you, that's you, you, you do the bowler hat with the big red feather, but that's way too pimpy for me. It's, it's not. That's not really emperor status. Yeah, yeah, he right. is. He's dressed to the to the nines to a degree. But imagine this guy walking. Forty nines. <laughs> <laughs> he goes out, and this is a daily day for Emperor Norton as he gets out there. He waxes philosophic for anyone who will listen. Um, if you came up to him and saw that he was a homeless guy and wanted to donate to him, he would literally say the following, go, ah, you've come to pay your tax directly to the emperor as opposed to going through my many facets of my government. Wise move, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> You're not donating to the homeless. He's collecting his tax, okay? Yeah, right. He also walks around and inspects the streets. Like he would whack the streets with his walking sticks. He always had like pimp canes pretty much yeah. that he would smack the streets and say ah good good enough for the quality of my citizens he would inspect cable cars and then after that incident with the cops talk to me wait a second you're did excited we, right now did we just find the first modern pimp did he <laughs> pimp the city <laughs> oh like, my wait god a second. like they're I think you're on to something, money. guy. <laughs> like, I didn't even think about this until just now. It was the peacock hat. And the, he, he was just missing the, the lowrider. Yeah, but they weren't invented. I know, yeah. I'm just saying. He walks the city. He inspects everything. They give him money. This is protection money. <laughs> <laughs> and Oh, no, he had a lowrider. That's a pretty low-riding bike. No way. The money that was already mine. <laughs> I love your coochie money. <laughs> Thank you for putting it back in my pocket. <laughs> Y'all is the best that the city of San Francisco, not Frisco, can give back to me. On that note, he had a couple wild proclamations. We're going to get to one or two of them where he was actually a genius. His biggest contribution to the city of San Francisco, they do not like it if you say a certain word out there. And the emperor made a royal decree with a tax involved. His this is his legacy right here. And you've already established the voice, Eric. A minute seven. I'm sorry, an hour seventeen into the show, a couple beers deep. We've got the voice down. Hit me with it. What's this pro? What's this proclamation from the emperor? Whoever after do improper warning shall be heard to utter abominable words, Frisco which has no linguistic or other <laughs> warrant, shall be deemed guilty of a high misdemeanor and shall pay into the imperial treasury as a penalty the sum of $23. That's right. If you said Cisco, which they hate Frisco. being called. Frisco. Frisco, I'm sorry. If you said uh, Frisco, which they hated, you know, the, the mention of out there, $25. There mm -hmm. it is. Boom. You got to pay the emperor, baby. So wow. give daddy his money. <laughs> if I was a bar, if I if I owned a bar around this time and someone actually if he put that proclamation when he put that proclamation that's out there, the door. I would have just been like, that's on the door. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> there's a there's a hack tax in comedy that uh, <laughs> if if you if you're on tour with somebody and they're like that joke's hack, you got to put you know you know cough up some money into the kitty. Um, that they would implement something like that. So that would be the same thing that the emperor's now uh, official imperial decree is out. Um, Another thing I want to say real quickly is uh, that... We didn't give him his biggest due credit yet. Oh, he's got a couple more, man. No, it's the big one. 
Well, I, there's one thing in particular. Um, it was his idea. Yes. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're about to get into this one. He's got two huge ideas, but I have to recap one thing before we move on, and that's that after he was released, this is the best part of the whole friggin' story. After he was released by, you know, because they petitioned, they said, we, do, we want Emperor Norton back out on the streets. He doesn't hurt anybody. So they put him back out on the streets. The cops, uh, the, the police commissioner of San Francisco releases him and issues a formal public apology to <laughs> Emperor Norton. Emperor Norton walks out and goes, and you, my good sir, receive an imperial pardon from the emperor. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy. This shit needs oh, a movie. From then on, from then on, I swear to God, Emperor Norton. Don't worry, man. I'm he, developing a this American Loser cinematic universe. This fucking point. <laughs> oh, if man. he came up to a cop on the street, a cop walking the beat, he would conduct uniform inspections for the cops. <laughs> Duh, looking very good today, sir. Indeed, That's indeed. Right. The pride of the empire, I might say. <laughs> you need more peacock feathers in mine, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the best part is, when the, when the cops would see him, Dash. they would stand at attention and salute the emperor of America. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love this. It's easier there's year to play along. You guys haven't told me anything bad. No, there's nothing bad. The um, rice thing. The rice thing sucks for him, okay? But Yeah, but like in a weird way, it like he he goes on, like imagine if it had succeeded though, he wouldn't have the same legacy. Right. It would be a whole different person. We'd be covering so, him for he'd be a piece of shit. Yeah, he'd just be a piece of crap. William Randolph Hearst pops in my mind whenever if he had made it as the rice magnate. Listen, we're not gonna talk about that because that gets Tesla involved. <laughs> <laughs> that gets everyone involved. That guy gets right. everyone. So Yeah, you're right, to- but he really didn't have a uh, um a loser quality about him. I think he ain't done yet. We either. could say that the rest of the country, anybody outside of San Francisco, was really the loser because they didn't fall under the the uh, jurisdiction <laughs> of Emperor Norton. Although he proclaimed that everybody was, but uh, truly, it was his. You got the big win coming. Up. His should have gone beyond that. He's got two. Moment. We've talked about this before. Now, I'm going to liken That's him to somebody insane. just for the pop culture reference. This is not an endorsement. This is not a condemnation. All right? Uh, condemnation. But uh, 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 Alex Jones, okay? People have uh, very polarizing opinions about him. However, every now and then, Alex Jones is right, and he's right before everybody else. So it's a broken clock theory. That being said, imagine that your whimsical Lord Hobo type... <laughs> Em- emperor right. of the homeless who who by the way <laughs> when he would eat there were there were two dogs in California out in San Francisco only two that were uh, only, <laughs> only two <laughs> they were homeless uh they were homeless dogs and they were named and they were also little mascots of the city i believe the names were bummer and lazarus and uh the it's dogs would often get free meals <laughs> wait wait to explain that one <laughs> like joe conti's in here <laughs> so so these two dogs, Bummer and Lazarus, would also be given free meals a lot of times, and uh, the emperor would sit with them and eat with them. So imagine walking into a, an upscale restaurant in San Francisco, and there's an emperor with his beaver hat on and his peacock feathers sitting with two raggedy-looking dogs. You know, j- Just try to picture Charles Manson sitting with Lady and the Tramp in a restaurant <laughs> when you walk in. Right. And you're like, oh, that's, that's the emperor. Now, also true. When Lazarus died, okay, uh, biblical uh, implications aside, uh, when Lazarus the dog died, his funeral was well attended and presided over by none other than Emperor Norton, who gave the full funeral services dressed as the Pope. (laughs) No, he didn't. (laughs) Absolutely, 100% true. So I'm saying all the crazy shit here, because guess what wild shit comes out of his head next? Larry Burke. One of his most famous mandates came in the early 1870s, when His Majesty Emperor Norton I announced that the city should appropriate funds for the construction of a bridge between San Francisco and Oakland. Ignored at the time, Norton's the first decree eventually came to fruition in 1936 with the opening of the, <laughs> of the Bay Bridge. So, so the San this Francisco, guy was like yeah. so ahead of his time in that aspect. John and actually, Stamos. that plaque that you had up on the screen earlier... Not Golden Gate. ...is at the... at the uh, Oakland Bay Bridge. ...at the Oakland Bay Bridge that he came to the realization that we got to be able to get Oakland tied in with, with Frisco here. John Stamos kind of owes his career to this man. 
Imagine if you will, Everywhere all right, you the will. full house theme, the full house theme, right? And it shows all the uncles, and then it's Uncle Emperor, <laughs> and he just... That's right. <laughs> Need to hold on to... to. <laughs> That's right. He's just preaching on the streets, and then he looks at the, the camera. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he hits that home run, and uh, he's got another oh home run, God. LP. You got that one loaded up? Uh, he's got a little sure. idea here I, that... I, uh, I love that you made this one the better one. You know, the bridge that spanned portions of the bay. <laughs> right, right. This is great. Yeah, you know, infrastructure, economy, all of this good stuff. But then this. Because this one blew my mind because <laughs> we talk about it a lot. Okay, so in comedy, uh, a, a big example would be that a lot of people have said, and it, there's been enough commentary on it that I don't have to go into it, but uh, a guy like Dane Cook, uh, during his stratospheric launch into stardom, uh, lifted a lot of bits from Louis C.K., who w- was well-known and well-respected, but not making Dane Cook money yet. So there's an aggravation when somebody else can take your work and profit off of it before you can. So that being said, uh, a certain president of the United States, later on, um, would go ahead and put this thing... He, he had a, you know some ideas post-World War I. We what was choose it? to go to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> 14 points of light out of uh, a guy by the name of President Woodrow Wilson, Dad, who was the former governor of what state? Or on New Jersey. It's the truth. And in his 14 points of light, he calls for something called the League of Nations. What does, years prior, a certain homeless emperor have to say about this idea, Dad? All right, go for it, Kev. Oh, you, man. You... you let it let us up to it. You you hit it home. He's got some good shit here. A uh, few philosophical ideas was that he decided he wanted to have something known as uh, the League of Nations. He advised that all the great powers of Europe should join together in some sort of a group with the United States or and, a European Union. Yep, and that none of those countries were allowed to go to war with each other, right? And that all religions needed to be tolerated. So this benevolent emperor... Oh, that'll never work. Of the, yeah. <laughs> so he literally created what went on to become the League of Nations, which, by the way, was the precursor for the United Nations. So the United Nations, in some weird, strange part, came out of a fried brain cell from a certain deranged <laughs> madman slash former multimillionaire. Uh, so did the WWE faction. That's <laughs> 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 so... Um, we got a bunch oh. of those out of the way here. This is great. Um, I love this guy. He There's does. nothing I don't like about him. Yeah. He's the best. <laughs> wait for it. Wait for it. He's we got a couple more. Well, we got we a couple got, more. We, uh, wow. Sadly, we have to uh, put his life to a well, conclusion, too. So. Before we kill him, uh-huh. before we kill him, I got two other things I got to say. One is that uh, he is the local fixture, right? He's greeted by passerbys. It's the emperor. Right, his once seemingly joke of a title has turned him into this ambassador of the city at this point, and sometimes he flexes that muscle. All right, and you'd think it would be for bad, right? Here's one that's interesting. So, two major populations that are out in San Francisco to this day, by the way, are uh, the Chinese, right, and then lower class uh, working, you know, Europeans of you know early Americans, if you will. So, um, and there was a lot of times there'd be mobs and riots and shit like that that would be breaking down, and it would get bloody, and occasionally deaths would be involved. That's so, not familiar. Yeah. <laughs> so one time there's a, a mob forming, and they're heading towards the Chinese, right? And uh, they're getting ready to uh, potentially maybe burn the Chinese out or whatever, or just you know try, just get a, a fight going. And uh, all of a sudden, in between the mob that's forming and the Chinese people that are getting ready to defend you know their section of town. Uh, in walks Emperor Norton, who walks out, stares down the crowd, lowers his head, recites the Lord's Prayer, and the mob just goes, well, you know, uh, I mean, I got shit to do. Uh, and the mob <laughs> disperses. So Emperor Norton dispersed a mob without incident. Emperor, Nor- Emperor Norton weirded Lord. out the crowd and was just like, <laughs> with the Jesus. Wow. <laughs> Riot it, control. That uh, by the way, that that him playing the Pope at the funeral for the the dog. <laughs> what was he dressed uh, as the Pope for this? No, he was not dressed as the Pope for this one. But there's a political cartoon of him uh, dressed as the Pope for the dog funeral. So that that's been mostly proven as well, uh, or at least it's just a great visual. Um, now, like we said, when his coat began to fray, uh, they went ahead and they gave him a new one here. And uh, like we said, the patrolman would salute him on the streets. He gets these free meals. We get the emperor's uh, new clothes. In 1870, he completed in full the United States Census, and as his job title wrote, Emperor. (laughs) 
I'm, this guy is amazing. So th- there's a couple of, uh, I'm going to throw to you for the, the literary references here too, Dad, as we're wrapping up. Uh, as Kahuna pulled up earlier that will be available on the American Loser, hopefully the Facebook page will be launched by them, but our Instagram page is already up. Uh, I will put up the glamour shots that if you looked at <laughs> if you looked at the generals from the Civil War and then a photo of uh, Emperor Norton, you would sit there and say for a second, all right, something's off, but I don't know what. Yeah, right. Was this like a, is this a Photoshop? And what, that's literally, what yep, was he in? there's the photo. <laughs> yeah. um, so he's got the title of emperor on the census, and then rumors wind up becoming more fun than the truths about the emperor in his later years. He'd be greeted by the tourists and the locals, like they said. Uh, a rumor was that he was the illegitimate son of Napoleon III, and that swearing to protect Mexico was an act of rebellion against his father, who he had a disagreement with. Another rumor was that he was betrothed to sitting queen of England, Queen Victoria. <laughs> and then another rumor was that he was pen pals with the Tsar of Russia, that the two of them would communicate. That one I might actually believe. <laughs> well, they actually, this is the craziest part. Dad, they bring the Emperor of Brazil to America, and when he arrives in San Francisco, they say, oh, you got to meet our emperor, emperor to emperor. <laughs> right. So yeah. what takes the piss out of an emperor, which we're not big on monarchs here in America to begin with, oh, let's introduce you to our, our emperor. Yeah, we, we got, got one, one of those. those too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, um, my God. If you're lucky, he'll bring his two dogs along with him. So. Exactly. So they, they sit him down for that. Um, but he's part of the local color, as authors would say, if you were to write about San Francisco. Yeah. San Francisco, fine literary heritage, too. You missed that photo. You were deep in his voice when oh that one popped God, up. Oh, my God, I love that it's, picture uh, of him on the old-timey bike. Emperor Norton riding his uh, bicycle. Um, but LP, he was a, a big literary figure. A lot of people reference him all the time. Uh, one such author would be Robert Louis Stevenson, who wrote Treasure Island. Has a, uh, I believe it's either a character based off of the emperor or the emperor himself shows up in the novel. Um, we, we never did find anything with uh, Jack London writing about him, uh, although they were both San Franciscans <clears throat> to a degree. Right. Uh, America's most famous author had something in one of his most famous works about the guy, hit me. Yeah, one of our famous American uh, authors, uh, Samuel Clemens, also known as Mark Twain, uh, worked as a journalist in San Francisco during the emperor's reign. And uh, Twain went on later to write a little thing uh, that some of us might have had some uh, familiarity with, but uh, he's the model of the the king, a royal imposter who appears as a character in a novel that Twain wrote called The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. So maybe right uh, before he meets we up with Tom Sawyer, you know? yeah, the last chapter before he meets back up with Tom Sawyer at the end of uh, Huck Finn is wow. um, it, it's. He meets up with uh, the king and another guy. I forget the, the other character's name, but the king is based off of Emperor Norton because he says, oh, I, I'm of ancient blood, as I say. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's, uh, he's influenced as you a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Now, unfortunately, we're running low on time here, and we got to roll, so we're going to wrap this up. We've hit a lot of the, the major marks of uh, Emperor Norton, but if you want to talk about a guy that the community loved... Look at he, that fucking crazy picture. He's got a, uh, the pictures are good of him, too. It, it really explains the character. So when this guy is walking out during one of his inspections one day, the emperor's there, the tourists are loving him, the locals are waving to him because they know him. And the, the police are saluting the him. The police that salute him, <laughs> and he drops on the middle of the street. He's on his way to give a lecture. That's how well thought of he was for a homeless guy. The other rumor that was persisting around this time was that he was actually still a millionaire but he just liked having playing a character and, and pretending he was poor oh so he was the first time he was so that's <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what they try to say in <laughs> so he winds up dropping on a street corner one day out of nowhere oh, and uh the cops run over to him right away they noticed it immediately because you're not gonna i mean imagine the naked cowboy dropping in times square people are gonna notice it it's gonna happen yeah so they uh the cops rush over to him they try to get a carriage to get him some uh, health care does not work out. He is dead. Okay, Emperor Norton has passed away. Wait, and he couldn't get health care. Correct. <laughs> was he a comic? <laughs> <laughs> so if you want, this is uh, in wow. in life. His term might have been a joke, but you can't print it if it's not true. So, ladies and gentlemen, the San Francisco papers the next day ran his obituary, sadly explaining Norton won Emperor America, Emperor of America, Protector of Mexico has passed on. The city uh, council. That would be his official title since Indeed. it's in print. It's in print. It's right there. You can't change it. It's like lying about your age on the census. Um, the city council, 
uh, originally, because they, they found out, by the way, when they went through his uh, flop house, if you will, all he had to his name was uh, some bonds from a, or stocks rather, in a, uh, a failed gold mine that had closed years earlier that were just worthless, um, a collection of various walking sticks, his scabbard that he had, right, for his sword, okay, a um, couple other dollars and cents here and there on him, and uh, I think like something like 60 letters that he wrote to Queen Victoria. So and the bones of Lazarus the dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, no such thing, unfortunately, on there. But um, he also had his imperial bonds that he was selling to the tourists. And uh, so when he died, they realized, okay, that thing about him being, you know, a highfalutin guy, not quite true. Right. So the city winds up paying for a proper uh, coffin to be made for him. And his funeral is attended by upwards of 10,000 people in the city. The, uh, the bourgeois... The loyal subjects. The lo- yeah. <laughs> Just people that showed up. The loyal subjects. So it's people that are out there doing, um, you know, good stuff here, if you will. But it, it's the the bourgeoisie and the working class and the the other hobos, and they're all following in this funeral <laughs> procession. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> they're following yeah. him around, man. The He's the hobos. best. The working class, the bourgeoisie, and the other hobos. <laughs> So he's fondly remembered here. By the way, uh, his official decrees, as Eric was reading earlier, are kept in the San Francisco History Museum. And there are movements to this day, to this day, Kahuna, to have that very same bridge, the San uh, Francisco-Oakland Bridge, Mm -hmm. should be renamed the Emperor Norton Bridge. I'm about it. I'm 110% about (laughs) it. I promise you. Once we turn a profit on the Patreon, right. We're gonna, we will donate oh, to we'll this lobby cause. To that. That's <laughs> I'm in there. But that I'm being in. that being said, here as we're wrapping up, does anybody else have anything else they got to hit before we throw to Kahuna for the casting couch? I think I'm good, but oh my god, I love this guy. LP, you got anything well, before we go? We're, we're good. Eric, you're the subject matter expert. Well, at the preemptory request. And desire the large majority of citizens in these the United States. I, Joshua Norton, formerly of Algoa Bay, Cape of Good Hope, and now for the last ten years and nine months, the past San Francisco, California, toss it to you, the big gooner, <laughs> to tell me who should play me on the casket couch. All right. So I'm thinking big screen comedy for this guy, but like, like comedy it. with heart, meaning like you, you laugh at him, but like you start to understand him and you dig it. <laughs> I w- I'm really vibing this guy. Like this is one of my favorite episodes. Like I love this. I guy. told you it was gonna Duh. be great. This is this is so good. So I'm thinking, I don't know what the hell's going on in that other room. So I apologize. Emperor so Norton's and I. I didn't. I was gonna stick with the comedy route, right? So my first choice. I have a couple of them. I was gonna go Rob Schneider, just because I think it would be so fucking funny. <laughs> Rob <laughs> Schneider is Emperor Norton. Yeah. <laughs> just because he's that look of lunacy, he can do so well. I was like, okay, he can probably knock that out. I don't think he can be serious. Though. I think he can be. I think if given the right material, he could be, and that's why my second choice is because I know he can be serious. Is Bill Hader? Because I because I know I like for, that. I like because I now, think Bill Hader could do it. As as comics, have you met Schneider? Say again. Have, have you, you met, met Rob Schneider? Schneider? Oh yes, I have. Okay, you have. Do yeah, you, I got a picture with him. <laughs> do you think he can pull off the serious nature of this role? I wonder because uh, Rob Schneider that. But I, he's 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 docile. He's a very nice man. I like very. him. He's super, super nice. Yeah, exactly. I don't think he can pull off this role. You don't. Think I so. like the hater role though. It's I like nice. I like hater I'm more throw only one. for the sec for the for the actual acting chops. The only reason I saw Schneider is because of just I'm gonna throw how he one. makes me laugh. I'm gonna throw one to you after your third. No, and go for it. I want to no, know no, this. No, 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 no. Go with yours first. Oh no, I I think I'm done after that. <laughs> I, I got I got one that me and my father are gonna like, but hit me, Eric. Go, Paul Giamatti. Ooh. Oh my God, yo, Paul Giamatti. He gets the the fire and the anger of being screwed by the Peruvian rice is, lords. But then that cr- and then, then that the crazy <laughs> of everything's fucked me up my entire life. 
What are we going to do? Uh, 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 of course, I'm going to become You know emperor. what's making me? I am emperor. You know why I agree and with you? you owe me $35 because you said Frisco. No, I didn't. <laughs> oh, I thought you were just saying that to me. I was like, I don't know you shit, Jack. Goddamn right. The, uh, you ever seen the movie Big Fat Liar? Yeah, of that, course. That's, that sells it Yeah, Paul me. Giamatti, right? Yeah, he that, should be, Paul Giamatti. He should be Emperor Norton. Stupid what was the one you two note. came up? Stupid side note here. Paul Giamatti, a member of Skull and Bones at Yale. Oh, pig right. Vomit. We told also pig vomit. <laughs> we talked about that, too. Now, that being said here, LP, I got one for you. You and me are going to like this. We're, we're a fan of this guy. All right. It's this is no, the first time I'm hearing it, it's too. It's not this, a possible movie. It's an impossible thing. You would have to resurrect this person. Oh, oh wait a minute. Here we go. John Belushi. Oh, that would be fun as hell. If you just picture, I'm saying, <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm saying, right. make make a San Francisco love story, a love story in San Francisco, right? Featuring, you know, it's still a comedy, it's a romantic comedy. This would have had to have been made in '83. Exactly. And Belushi is just a, a background role, whereas, say, like, um, say Bill Murray's about to kiss Karen Allen or something like that. Yeah. Those would be the two actors of the time yeah. that they're about to kiss in the background, and you just see Belushi doing an inspection of a cable car. This is terrible. <laughs> this is, <laughs> yeah. No, that's right. perfect. All right, right. so if Belushi. She's gonna play uh, his Majesty here. I would, I would then cast Dan Aykroyd as Mark Twain. Would that be okay? <laughs> I love it. This is I good. like this movie. Who's We're, Harold Ramis playing? That's uh, <laughs> nobody. Um, oh come on, the General dark Scott is <laughs> General Scott. Ooh, I like that on that one. Yeah. LP, anything you want to say as we're closing out here? No, we're just. Uh, we're really loving it here, and we want certainly want to thank all of our. Um, um, our folks that are supporting us with this whole thing and cannot do it without them. Yeah, cannot do it. <laughs> I do have continue, one thing to say. Cannot continue this. without them. So. I do have one thing to say. I because I know earlier you joked about the loser scale, about like where he ranks and stuff. I'm not going to rank him for this reason. <laughs> I think I I truly think that this dude is what a loser should be. Like this is everything that, oh. like this is what like a like everything goes right up for this heart. dude. <laughs> like this is who a lo- like this is premium American loser. Oh, I love it. But in the best way possible. So I'm not putting him on the scale because this dude is the scale. He transcends what you scale. Should. Yeah, right. like he's what you If you're going to be a loser, this be is the this kind type of, of loser. You're right, right. You hurt no one. Yeah, exactly. You hurt no one and you're looking to help everyone. It's true. And um, I, I like a lot of this stuff. This was a fun one here. So uh, it, we're going to have this one up. Uh, it's late. It's going to come out next Tuesday. So our most recent episode was Mike Is it Fink. really now? I don't know um, if the Sun Coast family can listen to this one. <laughs> no, that we didn't do anything bad on this one. It's lighthearted. Um, that being said, I do got to thank our guest. Uh, a lot of guests come in sometimes, and they need to get comfortable before they're willing to, to go here. I knew Eric was not going to have that problem. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Kahuna, obviously, you know, I know... Uh, Welcome it, addition to the show, by the way. Oh, Shut Eric will be back. Eric's money on that one. Eric has a very fun Facebook thing going on that's wrapping up currently. It was the all-time action tournament. Yes. And he made quarantine fun. I that can't was believe you. It. That yep. was me. Okay. I got bored, and I was like... <laughs> Uh, everybody always bitches about who's the best action star. And, you know, it's an exercise in futility because you always know it's going to come down to Arnold versus Stallone. <laughs> and we're in the final four as of tonight. Ooh, shit. It's four o'clock. I got to post those. Um, we're going into the final four tonight at eight o'clock. This will be posted way after that. We'll already. The tournament will probably the, uh, be over, yeah. Yeah, it'll be over. But, but you yeah, um, a new one coming. The next one uh, yes, Most Evil Bastard Walking the Face of the Earth in an action movie. Uh, criteria on that is you've got to be a human being, can't have superpowers, and you can't be from a comic book movie. Okay. As far as an action movie concerned, there's where it is. Uh, tomorrow we'll now, by the way, the... Sergeant Barnes platoon winning the whole thing. That's my horse, baby. <laughs> that's that's what you think. That's what you think. Um, take a look at Clarence Boddicker's rap sheet. <laughs> <laughs> Bitches leave. <laughs> It's pretty good on that it one, man. It was awesome having you on the show, man. Yeah, Eric's money. Well, I, well, I I hope I can come back. You know, please it's do. All, it's all up to KP. <laughs> it's, it's a matter of having to drive him from New York here. That's the uh, only... No, it's okay. really not But I love the guy. Bad. So, uh, no, buddy, you were great on this one. Thank you for giving us the, the, the fodder for this episode. Um, yeah, he was... Uh, I, I had never heard of uh, Emperor Norton until... KP mentioned it to me, and you I got feel it bad from, that from I don't Eric, know about so. Edward. <laughs> yeah, this guy rules. This he, is he's a, a guy that should be put up on hero status, not loser. celebrate not loser status. I want well, to well say yep. a correction. I I said I almost said Edward Norton. <laughs> <laughs> so my apologies. I meant Emperor. 
My fear is primal. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I do think we might have to make an Uncle Paul a commission to have him paint Emperor Norton for the studio. I think that's the next project. Okay. But I got to wrap up here. Um, of course, we, we, we're the prestige, one of the prestige podcasts on uh, the Shared Universe Network, right? But um, we are way, way over on our time. <laughs> oh, what so else is new? I'm out, sorry. Out of respect to Mike and Ming, we're going to wrap it up here. But I do got to say, again, thank you to all of our listeners. Thank you to the people who leave us reviews. We said earlier, if you want a bonus episode of the show, we can go greater depth on a lot of this stuff. Our first one was fantastic. We covered the wild story of the Rosenbergs. We even taught people what the Manhattan Project was all about. We did some wild that stuff John there. That John Lithgow movie? It's a <laughs> it was a damn good episode, man, and the people loved it, and we want to say thank you. We're going to reward you guys. It's a reward. It's not something else that you get. It's a reward because for the price of one large cold brew coffee from Dunkin' Donuts every month, you can help us keep this show going. I want to do the free thing. Mike and Ming are great to us, but they're businessmen. I can't afford to keep doing the show if we don't have uh, at least some stuff covered here. As of right now, we're starting to hit our goals. Uh, there's marketing stuff we got to do moving forward. We got to eventually give a raise to the old big Kahuna here, and uh, we're going to work on a deal uh, moving forward with Mike and Ming for you know a little bit more leeway with the studio time. But uh, please give us a, a, a check us out. It's on Patreon. It's called Honest Abe. For five bucks, you get the bonus episode, and you help keep the free episodes going. And if you can't afford that, I totally understand. Just listen to the free episodes and do us a favor and go ahead and uh, leave us a written review if you can on iTunes. That helps push us up in the rankings. Now, that being said, guys, we had a blast on this one. American Loser Podcast on Instagram. American Loser Podcast coming to Facebook as a page soon. Throw us a like. We won't spam you, all right? I'm not going to do any nonsense with that. Nothing bad. And it's just like we're just trying to make it happen here. Exactly. And if you want to help out uh, our boy, the Kahuna, he's got a great uh, couple of projects going on. I'll, I'll ask him what he's comfortable with me sharing on our we'll page talk soon. soon make it but happen Captain. in the meantime it's uh eric albert on facebook right yo some jokes and stuff Check uh, it. yeah you've, you're looking for me it's uh facebook slash mediocre marvel that's my bullshit tag on and, everything and find even on for the villain games group. if you want to find me on fortnite interesting first fortnite plug we ever had on yeah the show. if you want to play <laughs> i play with lucidi all the time <laughs> another guy that would have been a good guest oh, amazing. but that being said, guys, uh, American Loser Podcast on Instagram. KP Burke sucks on Instagram. KP Burke on Facebook. <laughs> Check me out. Stand up will come back someday, and then I won't be living off this podcast. But right now, it's all I have. <laughs> so, uh, Lawrence Patrick Burke, thank you again for all your work as always. No worries. Good man. shit here, guys. Eric Albert, great guest. Kahuna, we're on our way out. Ladies That's and gentlemen, your that was Emperor Norton, Emperor of America, Protector of Mexico, American Loser. Winner of your hearts. <laughs> American loser the day I was born An American loser the day I was born An American loser the day I was born